learn about a bunch of different um, activities for the summer. And uh, I'm really excited about this because all of these were because of relationships that we have in the community with different organizations who care about our community. And uh, Jeremy Hamburg and I met, I guess a couple years ago, and um, he were fortunate enough that he moved here to Orange County from New York City. Uh, and you'll learn more about his organization. But he contacted me about two months ago, I think it was Jeremy and said, hey, we would like to do some kind of a social program for you this summer, an educational program. And um, I was just thrilled that he volunteered to do that. So without any um, further ado, I, I'd like to welcome Jeremy. Thank you, Thank Jeremy, you. for joining uh, us. Thank you. So uh, Judy, do you want me to say a little bit about what we do or just sort of- Absolutely. This is your chance to inter explain yourself and what you do, as well as what you're, what you're thinking of for this summer. Got it. So hi, everybody. Um, I am the founder of My Best Social Life, and I work with Alana Frank, who will soon be Alana Hamburg. She's our director of education. And we run a first of its kind friendship and dating program for people on the spectrum. There's nothing like it anywhere in the world. And we're going to be bringing sort of a taste of that to uh, OCASG this summer. Um, Alana spent 16 years as a New York City public school teacher specializing in, in, uh, in special ed. I have been coaching in the autism community for 13 years now. We've uh, been doing some really exciting things. I don't know if any of you have watched Jewish Matchmaking on Netflix. Uh, it premiered last week. So we are uh, partners with Eliza Ben Shalom from Netflix. We are um, we are the autism and uh, neurodivergent coaches for, for her clients. So we have really, really cool partnerships sort of all around the world. Uh, but we live right here in, in Irvine. And, and it's really important to Alana and I sort of as newcomers to Irvine to, to really give back to the community. So um, our flagship program is called Social Life 360. Um, all of our clients are over 18. They're between 18 and 70. Uh, the average age is 20s and 30s. And what's really unique about the program, uh, number one, is that we give our clients a really warm, really inclusive, really uplifting uh, community of, uh, of people who are in our program and graduates all across the country, all the way to Canada, all the way to Australia. And they hang out and keep each other company sort of day and night. Um, and uh, it's really nice for a lot of our clients who've never really felt embraced, uh, never felt wanted in some cases, to, to join a program where we start out by giving them a community uh, that allows them to feel like, like they really belong there. And then we teach, uh, we teach friendship and dating skills, really how to become part of a tribe, how to make relationships within a tribe, how to start dating. We teach that over the course of 12 weeks. We do it in the really the most fascinating uh, modules. So every day for 12 weeks, we drip to our clients a little bit of the strategy. And what's really, really unique about it is we're not teaching our clients how to mask. We're, we're actually decoding social situations uh, and we are turning social situations into formulas and diagrams and schematics and step-by-step -step processes so that our clients can understand what they're seeing because when they can understand what they're seeing in the social world then they can uh can really become a part of it and so we teach our social skills by mostly by online module over the course of 12 weeks they're they're super neurodivergent friendly uh and we also do a combination of group coaching individual coaching on-demand coaching um, and there's really nothing like it on the planet. And it's something that we, we really love deeply. So that's sort of our flagship program. Um, but, you know, so we wanted to bring sort of a, a taste to that, to OCASG. And so what we're doing is we're going to be doing um, a three-part series where, well, it's actually technically a six-part series, Judy, right? Because we're going to do a workshop on a Thursday, followed by Judy running a social gathering uh, or social. Judy, you want to say something about that? 
actually what we're going to do is sync up our social activities with uh, Aaron, and we actually have a, a second social coordinator for those um, who weren't aware, but uh, Brian, going blank on his last name right now, but he is, has joined us. He's also an ABA um, therapist. And so what they're gonna do is we're gonna coordinate the social activities so it, it follows the um, educational component that Alana and Jeremy will be offering on a Thursday. So that Saturday we'll have a social activity. And the idea is that the people will attend the educational component and then be able to apply it in an in-person event um, sponsored by OCSG. I think that's what we agreed to. <laughs> that's, that's totally it. That's 100% correct. And so what, so a lot of times what Alana and I do with organizations is we sort of come in and we talk for about 45 minutes about the, the about the very distinct, very simple steps that uh, that autistic adults can take to get from the social life they have now to the one that they want to lead. And it's just a little bit quick. So what we wanted to do with Judy is really sort of break that that 45 minutes down into much larger chunks so that Alan and I can uh, can talk about some of the best practices and some of the steps that really lead to more vibrant social lives. And we can sort of work through it with uh, with some of the young adults and adults at OCASG. So we're not just talking sort of at you and giving you the steps, but we're actually helping you do some work and some thinking around it so that you can make it your own and make it work for you. So we'll do that over the course of, uh, of uh, three sessions, one per month that will be linked up to one of OCASG's um, uh, social calendar events. And, uh, and that's it, we're looking forward to it. Now I'm gonna make sure that my kids aren't uh, tearing the house down. I mean, before you go, just wanted to see if there are any questions uh, for Jeremy before we uh, move on to the next topic. You know what I'll do, uh, Judy? I'll put my um, I'll put my email address. Okay, perfect. And and you'll have people email. And if if you want at the end, if if folks have questions, you can give them to me, and I'll pretend like I know the answer. And if not, <laughs> we'll have uh, Jeremy totally. answer them later. Totally. So okay, my my email address and and our website is in the chat. And everybody is free to, to reach out to us. Alana and I spend all day, every day, thinking about how to help uh, people in the spectrum be more social, make friends, become part of a tribe, land dates. It's all we do. We don't do anything else. Uh, so if you have a question, if it's something that's on your mind, just feel free to email us. We love it. And, and I just want to mention to people that Jeremy spoke to our group. Um, he, he did a webinar on the five steps to dating. And uh, that was recorded and um, it's on our resource page. I'll show you real quickly where that is. Um, so if you want to get a better handle on, on their program and what they do, that's a really good resource that you can have available. But Jeremy, thank you so much. Thank you. Good. Nice to meet You're everybody. Okay. And hopefully we'll see a whole lot of you uh, okay. this summer. All the best, everybody. Bye, Jeremy. Let me just quickly show you our, our resource page, um, just so that you're aware of uh, some videos that might be useful. So I'm on my our website again. If you scroll down on our resource page to these educational videos, every, every one of the good things about COVID is we started doing all our sessions over over Zoom, and that allowed us to record them all. So. If we scroll down here, I think we would find the five, here it is, five steps to dating. And here's a link if you wanna watch uh, Jeremy presentation, which is really uh, interesting presentations. So, so anyway, so Judy, any that questions? Just you, yeah. That just takes you to his website for his video? That video is just, um, the, what the links he gave us is, is to his email and his, um, and his website. But the link I just shared on our resource page takes you to a video where he spoke to our group about the five steps to dating. And so if you want to kind of shop around a little bit and get a better feel for who he is and, and his his okay. philosophy, then I, I welcome you to um, to watch right. that. Yeah, I think that same video is on his website, his website too. Oh, it's probably a different one, but so oh, it's so. different. Okay, <laughs> I doubt he used the one that he did for us. Oh, well, <laughs> he he used one okay. that, <laughs> they're very some. It's a it's a similar. It's similar. Topic. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so um, 
any questions on that, we'll move on to the next topic, uh, which means a lot to me. Um, so 10 years ago, I started working on um, bringing Toastmasters to individuals on the autism spectrum. I did a speech craft, which was a, an eight week workshop during the summer of 2012. And uh, with about 10 to 12 uh, young adults, and I was blown away by the changes I saw in them uh, by leveraging Toastmasters International's curriculum. And then I went on to form the OCSG Gavel Club, which we've been doing for 10 years, once a month, every sat second Saturday from 9.30 to 11. About um, a couple years ago, I was at a conference and there was a speaker from Cal State Fullerton and that speaker, um, I, I contacted her and talked about our group. And she introduced me to Sasha, Dr. Sasha Zydek and said she thought Sasha might be interested in what we were doing. And after uh, a conversation, Sasha seemed very interested in our gavel club. And, um, and so she started coming to it. And then she invited Yaz, uh, Yasmin uh, Polarian to come to it as well. And, uh, and the result is what you're going to hear about today. But for me, one of my goals for Toastmasters in Autism was because it's so effective and so available around the world in hundreds of countries, it just seems like a great opportunity to help um, individuals on the spectrum improve their quality of life, improve their social skills, just be happier. And to make that really happen, it needed proof. It needs it needs published papers, et cetera. And so Sasha and Yaz are is our pathway to that. And without any more from me, I don't know who's sharing and who's talking, but welcome Sasha and Yaz. Okay, I'm gonna share. Can you all see? Can you hear me? Okay, we can see. Oh, perfect. Okay, so um, that was a great introduction, Judy. Um, just to give a little bit more context from my perspective, um, when Judy originally contacted me, it was about something else. It wasn't even about the gavel club, but she's telling me about the things that you all do at OCASG, and I said, I got to see this, a public speaking group for adults on the spectrum. That sounds so interesting. Like, it sounds like they would not like it. <laughs> um, and I was really blown away. And Judy, you know, is being humble. You know, I, I think it's pretty amazing that she's been doing this for 10 years now. And so it's obviously a big success in, in even though, like she said, we need some research behind it to, to show the world that it's a big success. It's obviously a big success or else it wouldn't be going on for um, 10 years. And so um, after observing the Gavel Club a couple times and inviting my colleague, um, Dr. Bellorian, who's also here to observe the Gavel Club, we um, decided to write a grant to study the Gavel Club and um, and then to do again what Judy has already done 10 years ago, um, to gather a group of people who've never participated in Toastmasters and um, work with them for 10 weeks. Um, so we're going to get into that um, in a little bit here. But um, we want to start out for, by showing a video um, that Judy made that, um, you know, sort of highlights the, the original group. Um, and the history of the Gavel Club. So um, give me a thumbs up, Judy or Yaz, if you can hear, okay? I'm gonna make sure we can hear. Judy, are you saying something? Yeah, you can't hear it. You need to share share again and share sound. Oh, so okay. You share, and then there's like two boxes at the bottom and one says share sound. Ah, there we go. Okay. Okay, let's start over. <laughs>
Um, as far as the Gavel Club, uh, that has just been an amazing uh, springboard for him to develop socially. Um, he, watching his progress and all of the people involved in Gavel Club to see their progress from when we started a couple years ago until now, um, they've just blossomed with their confidence and speaking skills. And I think most importantly, their social skills. They've developed friendships. We all have. Yeah. As a recent college graduate seeking a full-time job, I have great interest about the impact of COVID on the job market and the future of work. From what we can observe so far, the pandemic has affected in-person services and high digital skills in very different ways. Well, it's helped me develop more self-confidence and social skills. Learn how to prepare and structure speeches and evaluations and improve communication skills. At that point, because things turned out so sour, I could have decided I would have hated the world and had more bitterness towards the world. But I decided, I, I realized I had a choice at some point and decided I didn't want to live like that. In one of my last speeches, I was talking about the death of Superman. And I mentioned Batman in that speech. In this speech, however, I'm not going to be talking about the Dark Knight himself. I'm going to be talking about one of his main villains. But it's not going to be the Joker, the Penguin, the Riddler, Scarecrow, Two-Face, Reyes al Ghul, or Catwoman. You see right here, it's going to be this man, Bane. You know, certainly the Gavel Club, um, you know, is really helpful in, um, you know, improving Kenny's communication skills. Uh, learning how meetings are structured. You know, he's pretty introverted. So just having a group, a community, I think is really important for us um, both. Lastly, even though we love to scare ourselves, mankind's greatest fear is the unknown. For the fear of the unknown is one of the most natural and incentive fears that we have. This is because people love the world to make sense by having things wrapped up in nice, neat little packages because our world is easier to engage in when things make sense. So some may choose to further engage with the unknown in order to make better sense of the world. Um, ever since joining Gavel Club, I got a, a little bit better at speaking in public and creating my speeches. When I first joined Gavel Club, I would speak um, fast and people couldn't understand my words. I'm getting better right now. I'm not speaking more slowly and clearly, though sometimes I will slur my words and speak too fast. But other times I do speak slowly and clearly enough so people can understand me and I'm getting better at organizing my speeches because of the topics into the proper and getting better at practicing my speeches and not reading directly from my note cards and directly looking at the camera. And I'm also glad I'm able to make um, some more friends beyond my coworkers at work and I think it's really healthy. Perfect. Thank you, Lauren. Right, so it's a little uh, taste of the um, the Gavel Club uh, through Judy's lens. Um, and I want to say that another thing that really attracted us to the Gavel Club was the fact that it wasn't like a traditional um, social skills intervention that we, you know, were so familiar with, but instead it's more of a naturalistic way that these adults get to make friends with each other and improve their social skills and communication skills. And so we were really sold as you can tell, because that's two years later and we're um, still here, um, you know, um, 
at, at what Judy had done. So we uh, submitted a grant to the organization for autism research and um, we, we got the grant, which was really exciting. And um, just to kind of give a quick overview, um, the purpose is to study this community-based public speaking program. Um, and we have what we call a community or what the method is called the community-based participatory approach. So we have um, four um, autistic uh, Toastmasters, Judy and Ken Woodward, who's the father of an autistic um, the Kenny who was in the video. Um, and they are on um, a, a partner. There are, there are partners for our study. So we meet with them once every, about every other month and talk about the things that are going on in the study. So the study has been going on for about a year. And um, here's a kind of a timeline of what it's looked like. So first we started with observation of the Gavel Club meetings. And we did that for about nine months. Um, we also did interviews with autistic members of the Gavel Club autistic members of other Toastmasters clubs and also parents and mentors. So we've interviewed over 30 people. Um, and the goal with these two steps was to really understand whether, for whom, and under what circumstances Toastmasters is a meaningful community-based pro program for autistic participants. And in a minute, um, Yaz is going to give a little bit of um, insight into some of the results that we're seeing uh, from the first phase of the study. The next phase of the study, um, we're currently adapting the speech craft curriculum. So the speech craft is what Judy originally started with when she started the Gavel Club. Um, and so it's a 10 week program and we're, we're recruiting. So one of the reasons that we're here talking to you tonight is we're trying to um, find uh, autistic adults who've never participated in the program before to get you know, a chance to participate for 10 weeks um, in this pilot program. So Yaz, I'm gonna let you um, take it away here and, and give a little bit of a little bit about our results. Yeah, definitely. Um, can you hear me okay? Okay, great. So um, as Sasha mentioned, we've interviewed um, at this point 22 autistic adults who either um, are currently attending or have previously attended Toastmasters. And our goal was to learn from their experiences and understand how this program can be helpful for young adults on the autism spectrum. So, so what did we learn? What did we learn from these interviews? We discovered a few um, important things about the program. So first of all, these adults mentioned some specific benefits they gained from participating in Toastmasters. And these included getting better at communicating, um, becoming uh, more skilled in leadership, gaining confidence, and feeling like they belong to a community. Um, they also found some unexpected advantages, or what we thought were unexpected advantages, like making new friends and learning practical skills for everyday life, um, seeing improvements in their mental health. And so um, I wanted to share a couple examples of what autistic participants said in these interviews. So one person shared that the greatest benefit, which um, in their opinion isn't talked about enough, is feeling confident when speaking and getting a message across. Um, they said that Toastmasters helped them feel more assured in their ability to communicate effectively. And this newfound confidence in speaking up and expressing themselves was a big advantage. Another participant mentioned how much they loved the community at Toastmasters. And they said, everyone gets their chance to shine. I just love the community there. It's just a healthy community. So people feel supported and encouraged. Um, and they have opportunities to showcase their skills and talk about their interests and feel um, included and valued. And so these quotes show that Toastmasters has the power to kind of transform communication skills, boost confidence, and it, it also provides a friendly and inclusive environment um, where individuals can grow and thrive. And so just a few more examples are on this slide. One participant emphasized the importance of being able to convey a, a message clearly, concisely, and effectively. Um, they mentioned learning how to be organized while expressing themselves, um, serving as their own advocate, and acting as a liaison for, for various matters or issues. And so essentially Toastmasters help them develop skills that enable them to speak up for themselves and effectively represent their interests and needs, which is very important. Um, another interviewee shared their favorite aspect of Toastmasters, which is the opportunity to see individuals, uh, other individuals flourish. 
And so they emphasize the joy that they experience from being part of a social circle within the Toastmasters community. Um, and so building connections and forming relationships with others was a significant source of satisfaction and fulfillment for them. And these quotes shed light on the valuable skills gained through Toastmasters, um, again, such as effective communication, self-advocacy, and really just the enjoyment of a supportive social community. Um, and so, you know, from these interviews, we're learning that Toastmasters not only equips individuals with you know, practical abilities, but also fosters meaningful connections and a sense of belonging. So what's next for us? Um, we're really excited to share that we will be hosting two new Toastmaster groups using the adaptive speech craft curriculum. One group will happen in the summer and one will take place in the fall. Um, both groups will be on, held online through Zoom. And so if you're interested in joining, we'd love to hear from you. Keep in mind that these groups are part of a research study, so there are some requirements you need to meet to participate. Um, participants should be between 18 to 34 years old, have a high school diploma, have an autism diagnosis, speak English fluently, and as, as Sasha mentioned earlier, be new to Toastmasters. So if you've already been in Toastmasters before, you won't be able to join these specific groups. Um, but as part of the study, we'll ask participants to also fill out some surveys in order for us to really evaluate the um, benefits and effectiveness of the program and to thank you for, for your time or for, to thank participants for their time, um, they'll receive $100 at the end of the study uh, for completing those forms. So if you or someone you know is interested and would want to get involved, um, I'm going to drop the link to our interest form in the chat. So please fill this out with your name and preferred contact information. Um, you can also, uh, and, and when you fill out the form, either Sasha or myself will get in touch about your interest. Um, you can also feel free to just email um, Sasha. I'm gonna put her email address in the chat. Um, and if you have any questions at all or, or would like to express them, uh, would like to, to express interest in participating, you can email us instead of filling out the, uh, the interest form, whichever is your preference. So we're really excited about these new Toastmasters groups and can't wait to have you be a part of them. Um, so thank you for investing your time in this presentation and we hope that you feel inspired um, to connect with us soon. So we, forgot to, we forgot to mention that Judy will be the one facilitating the groups. So that's an important fact because very she's, important. Um, proven to, to be um, a key ingredient, at least in, in the uh, in the OCASG group. So um, go ahead, Judy, what were you gonna say? Yeah, I, I just wanted to give people a chance to ask any questions that might they might have. So um, if you do have a question, raise your hand or put it in the chat or, you know, whatever's most convenient for you. Any questions out there? Um, real quick question. Um, would having a uh, uh, public speaking training from a non Toastmasters source, such as through prior employment or college, um, put you in the exclusion criteria for the study? No, no, we welcome um, we welcome you to to fill out the form if you're interested. That would not be an exclusionary factor. Yeah, a lot Thank of you. times members of our a lot of times members of our group. Uh, do have that, or sometimes they start taking speaking classes in college and they're able to get, double dip and get leverage some of the presentations that they're preparing for Toastmasters and use that in class. I see Ken Kenny smiling. I don't know if he did that, <laughs> but uh, I do know of some others that have. Any other questions? I see a question in the chat um, that if someone is less than six months in the program, um, would they be el eligible to participate? I think that's a really good question. And it's, uh, I don't know, a bit of a, a gray area. Um, you know what, why don't, if if you are interested, I would suggest reaching out and that way we can really um, figure out if, if the program would be a good fit. Thank you for your question. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm so happy that Sasha and Yaz are here. And I, I just want you to think you could be part of history. So um, this is gonna be a very, very important study. 
and it's going to be very impactful and you can be a part of changing the world. So um, I encourage you to, to um, consider participating. I'm checking to see, I know that uh, Jenny Liu is here. I just wanted to introduce Jenny. Jenny is on the community group and she also is the president of Neurodiverse Leadership Toastmasters, which was founded in June and is official Toastmasters group that um, focuses on neurodiverse folks. And Jenny, I just wanted to welcome you. And just if you wanted to just mention a few things about your club, just so um, others are aware. Uh, sure. Um, thanks to Judy, who is the co-sponsor of Neurodiverse Leadership Toastmasters. We were trying to level up and build upon her legacy with the Gavel Club um, to take it up a further notch, not just focus on public speaking, but also leadership skills, which is the tagline for Toastmasters, where leaders are made. And so our club is a little bit different in the sense that it is a mix of neurodivergent uh, professionals who are mostly autistic, but some also have, for example, attention deficit hyperactive disorder or other learning challenges, but they are complemented by supportive neurotypical professionals who are range from caregivers to educators and managers who are vested in bringing out the best and full potential of the neurodivergent professionals because they have a vested relationship for working with these um, individuals. And so we are working with people like Judy to not only learn about neurodiversity, but also perhaps adapt the program and accommodate um, as we learn more about the needs of the neurodivergent adults in our group. I think that's enough. Thank you. Anything else? So we'll send out an email with more information on this, but um, just a show of hands, how many people are interested in participating? Hard to tell, Grayson, we will see. Um, thank you so much, Sasha and Yaz. Thank you for having us, um, Judy. And if anyone has any um, other questions, please feel free to send us an email, okay? Um, or fill out the interest form and then we'll, we'll contact you. And everyone have a great night. Thank you. I see our next speaker is here, so I'm going to make her a co-host. Hi, Alexandra. Hi. Yeah, welcome. Hi. So um, this next uh, speaker is Alexandra Kales, and she, um, normally we have Karen O'Hanlon, who is the educational director at the Chance Theater, join me, but Karen is hard at work getting ready for a performance by the veteran speak up. Uh, so she is unable to attend and she asked Alex to attend. Um, Alex, I'm gonna just start off by showing the video if that's okay um, and, and tell them a little bit and then we'll, we'll have you uh, continue. Is that fine with you? Yeah, that would be great. That's perfect. So just a little context about over six years ago, I was contacted by someone from the Chance Theater who indicated that their board was interested in them working more with people on the autism spectrum. And uh, we came up with the concept of Spectrum Speak Up. Uh, the Chance Theater had been doing a teen speak up program for years. And the teen program was an opportunity for teens to uh, basically do a theater workshop for the summer. And in the end, they actually wrote and produced a show. And so I think it was five years ago, we did our first Spectrum Speak Up. Um, and, and Karen O'Hanlon, who, who has for each year uh, continued to do it, pulled together a group of a dozen to um, 14 or 15 teens uh, who are on the spectrum, who, um, spend the summer learning about theater. And I'm gonna show you just a little video that was made uh, the first year um, when, uh, when they first did the Chance um, Spectrum Speak Up programs. Hold on, it's not showing there. 
What do you want from the other person? What is the story you're telling? What do you want the audience to know? Thank you for sharing yourself on stage today. Brave people and have fun. My name is Coyote Odebo. My favorite part was how we put on a play and it brought us all closer together. Four more years till we're out on our own. It's not yet time for us to be alone. But it's a good place to be around a group of people like you. And also, it's just a really fun place that you could goof off in. It's not like totally serious. I signed for Speak Up Spectrum because theater is my passion. It was still dark outside when I woke up. I needed to walk to ease my nerves. Don't worry, sir. You and the anti-villain agency are protected by me. The ABA and the world needs you, Wave Runner. I came here and now I have so much stuff to work on. I, my time is filled. So I've been trying to save people and I don't like to be touched or hugged, but they rarely ever understand. I hope this is a this becomes a year-round program. I decided to sign up for Speak Up Spectrum because I thought it would be pretty fun for me to enjoy, you know, during the summer. None of us get to choose where we're born, what our genetics are, and what our family is like. But we do get to choose how we treat others. Everyone is nice here, and you know you'll love it, and you'll be in the play that you'll make, that you'll create with your friends. I'm like a bird. I don't want to be stuck in a cage. I want to spread my wings and fly free. My favorite part was like making new friends and playing games with them. I can't speak for anyone but myself, but I can assure you that your thoughts and options may change. It is an absolutely wonderful program. Everybody here is kind, always willing to listen to you, trying to cheer you up when you're having a bad day. And it is one of the greatest things I feel I have done so far. So hello, Alex, welcome. Hi, thank you. Yeah, I think the, the video does a really good job of capturing just um, the camaraderie and the excitement from all of the students involved. Um, it's a really amazing program. Um, so I had the privilege of being the program assistant last summer and I'll be returning this summer as well. Um, it's a program that runs Tuesday, Thursday in the summer from 10 to three. Um, and we do also have a lunch break in there so that um, all of the participants can kind of socialize and build friendships and there's never anyone sitting alone or in a corner by themselves. It's like a, a very social, um, very inclusive environment. So it's, it's a really wonderful thing. Um, and the time is spent uh, the first couple of weeks, we work on just building theater skills, getting to know each other, playing theater games and kind of warming up to the idea of being in front of an audience. And then um, after a few weeks, we get into the storytelling bit. So we'll have students start to write. Um, if they don't want to write down their words, we'll have them record um, or just speak to Karen and I speak to one another. And um, what was really interesting was most of the kids came in and they already had a story that they had thought of and that they were really eager to tell, whether it was from their own personal experience or it was just something that they had kind of dreamed up. We had everything from a myth about a wolf, an ancient wolf, to um, people sharing their true experiences with the foster care system, to um, children sharing their experiences in the classroom with one another. Um, so really a wide range and we give them the freedom to tell whatever story they want. Um, but then we also try to find a through line between all of the stories. So where do they connect? Where do they link? Um, where can we make it a cohesive um, showcase that their parents can come see at the end and kind of see what they learned um, and to, for it to tell a story about our students and about the stories that they have in their heart that they want to share to the audience. Um, so I see a question already here. Does it require students to write a play, um, but could write a poem? Yes, absolutely. So nobody is expected to come in knowing how to write a play because obviously most high schoolers and middle schoolers haven't ever done that before. So um, as long as they have a story or an idea, 
um, or even if they don't have one yet, we encourage them to join. And usually um, after a few weeks, the students have some ideas already just from doing the theater games, working with one another. And if they don't, we're happy to help them along with that. Um, so if they have a poem, that would be amazing too. We can always turn that into something bigger. Um, sometimes we have students do monologues as well. So um, if they have something that they feel really passionate about sharing, they'll kind of have their own moment on the stage with a spotlight or um, with only a couple other actors around them and they can do a perform a monologue as well. So a poem would definitely work. Um, and the age requirement, I believe it's, 13 um, up until 19. So after they um, have been out of high school for one year, they can still participate. I wanted to comment that last year there was actually uh, one of your students did some animation. That was just uh, yes. amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. So they had actually been working on it already previously before the summer, and it was something that they wanted to tie into the showcase. And we were happy to do that. So it's really not about what um, our vision is for the show. We have no idea what it's gonna look like going into the summer. And that's the really cool thing about it is that it's shaped by each of the students and their individuality kind of creates a unique show every year. So everybody's talents, um, yeah, create something really unique. So if um, asks, what does what if a student doesn't know how to act? That's totally fine as well, because we do work on acting skills and um, just feeling comfortable on stage. We play a lot of improv games in the first couple weeks, and we start off with really simple things, just getting comfortable um, having a back and forth between actors um, until we build up to doing longer scenes and eventually reading our own personal scripts and performing those. So. Um, it's definitely a great opportunity if they like theater or if they're interested in it to build those skills. Uh, okay, there's a couple of questions for you. Will you ever offer anything for adults? We always get that question. Yeah. Um, I know that there, there's been some work looking, I don't know if Alex knows, there's been some work looking into that, um, but I don't think we're at the point uh, to announce anything, but I know that Casey Long has been meeting with some people on that. On the next one, can parents sit in the class? Um, I would have to talk about Karen with that. Usually um, we don't have the parents sit in the class just so the students can kind of get comfortable with one another. And so it's an opportunity for them to kind of build friendships and things like that. But um, we could always discuss that too on a case by case basis with you. I just wanted to also mention how inclusive uh, Karen and the Chance Theater are with these uh, young people. A lot of times when the summer's over, they continue to engage with the Chance Theaters, maybe ushering at some shows, also doing maybe some activities uh, throughout the year. Also, I've seen a lot of good friendships form where some of these uh, students have been homeschooled and they're fairly isolated and so, all of a sudden they had a girlfriend who they could spend the night at their house and, and spend the weekend. So it, it is definitely impactful at a, a deeper level than uh, most summer programs that I've seen. Um, yeah, I can um, agree with that as well. It was wonderful to see that we didn't have to push people together. There were groups that of kids that kind of naturally gravitated towards one another and um, when we would kind of see what they were doing at lunch, I saw them uh, exchanging numbers and things like that and talking about making weekend plans and that all happened really organically. So that was wonderful. Yeah, when we originally de designed the speech craft, one of the important things was lunch and mm -hmm. needing to have free time where they can just bond and grow and those relationships could happen. And it really has happened consistently every year. So it's it's just a wonderful program. Any other question? Why don't I share the screen that has, um, let me share my screen. And this, this is, uh, you can get to the Chance Theater page from our website. Um, so if you go to ocaspergers.org, we have a link right on the home page. So 
So there's the Chance Theater. And here's information on the program. And you can see there's a registration link right here, um, as well as details at the time for the workshops. Um, so we're school's ending early this year, right? <laughs> I, I heard, I mean, I was used to school ending around Father's Day, and now school ends a little bit after a Memorial Day. Um, but uh, so it starts June 12th to July 13th on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and then Tech Week, you wanna talk about Tech Week, uh, Alex? Yes, absolutely. So the first few weeks, like I said, we're kind of building skills, then starting to work on storytelling. And then the last week is when it's kind of crunch time um, and we're finalizing scripts and we meet every single day of that tech week. So um, in that time, we're really making sure that everybody feels comfortable with what they're going up on stage with because we don't want any of them to feel like um, it's last minute or they're not prepared. So we really spend that week making sure the scripts are set they feel confident. Um, we walk through the show on stage with tech, with lights, so that they know exactly what it's going to feel like when they're up there. Um, we have, you know, their music and cues and all the different props that they're going to need. So it's just kind of putting all of those final building blocks together. Um, and I will also say that we usually do also let the students use scripts on stage. So last year, everybody had a script in hand. And then Karen and I were on the sides of the stage with scripts, turning them for the students so that each scene was ready for them when they went on and off stage. And that just kind of takes away the pressure of having to memorize all of these lines. And it really focuses the whole experience on just enjoying being in a theater, learning about what it's like to act and be on stage versus just memorizing lots of different things. So. So the process of applying is you just fill out the form and then Karen will arrange for a time to actually talk to the parent and the child um, and interview them and see, you know, and, and in a sense, she's trying to put together the right group that's going to um, work well together over the summer. So um, she's in the process. I think you already have 10 people who expressed interest in the program. I think five are coming back from previous year. So a lot of times people will come back and do this year after year after year. And I, and one of the young ladies, Faith, who was in the video, she's come back year after year. And she even came back, I think last year, uh, helping with, um, as, a, as a college student who was studying theater now, um, helping out with the uh, program. Yes, the um, the interview that we do isn't asking specific questions about their theater experience or anything like that. It's just to make sure that they're going to get a lot out of the program and that they're going to be a good fit with the group. Okay, any other questions? So I, I thank you, Alex, so much. Um, I just wanted to close by saying that summer is really important. Uh, our young people on the spectrum work really, really hard during the school year. Um, it's a lot harder for them than I think anyone because of dealing with the social side and dealing with studying and trying to excel in, in, a, in a difficult situation. And summer is really an important time to relax and to and to grow, um, and I think that the programs that we talked about today, the the social skills uh, program, the uh, spec, this um, speech craft, and the um, chance theaters spectrum speak up are all programs where it's fun. They'll learn but they'll have some different experiences and have opportunities to connect with other, other people and, and form friendships that they may not have time to do during the school year. So summer is really important. And I, and I hope you're able to take advantage of this. And if none of these are the right fit for you, I just want to invite you to go to our Facebook group, join that. I post, we have seen some things posted from, um, Spectrum Laboratories just today in entertainment, as well as Exceptional Minds. There are 
a bunch of different summer programs that are going on. So um, if you see one there, that's great. Or if you can share one, that's great. Um, but I, I do invite you to, to make summer, summer count. Uh, any other questions, comments? Alex, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh, just one last thing. The shows, you can actually, when the show happens, you can actually buy tickets and attend. So if you're interested, I, I really recommend it. It'll, it's just um, very uplifting and opens your eyes. And I've, I've used video from those uh, sessions and, and talks because it's just so wonderful to hear um, people's perspective on, on, on what it's like to grow up on the spectrum and, and the Chance Theater really helps them articulate their voice. So, okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. The, tonight's session has been recorded. I'll well, I have one more question. You. Yeah, go ahead. Who, who has so a question? Me, yeah, I was looking at the, um, the dates. It looks like the performance. Is that one week? That's 10 to 3. They're performing every day. No. No, so those would be rehearsals, and then we have three performances. I think it's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but I could be wrong. So it would just be on the weekend. Okay, the 22nd, 23rd, right? And then the yes. Friday. Yeah, the 22nd and 23rd are the performances right here. Okay, and then what time are those performances? The There's a matinee and an evening. The matinee is what, around noonish or one-ish or something like that, and the evening one is, I don't know, six or seven yes roughly i don't think we have the exact times set yet okay thank you no problem okay well thank you everybody i hope you have a great evening bye for now